Hello guys, Su Jerry speaking. Welcome to Bedtime Stories, episode number 197 or 96, something like that. Excuse me. And today we read you Barney's Great Adventure the movie, based on the transcript by Stephen White. Adapted by Mark H. Martin Hill, illustrated by Rick uh, Grayson. So let's read it now, got, shall we? So we got for us. See here, Barney's Great Adventure, adopted by Mark S. Burnhill, illustrated by Rick Grayson. So let's see what happens next. So we got, shall we? So we got for us. Oh wow, the illustrations look nice. Anyway, Cody and Abby Newton were visiting their grandma and grandpa in Greenfields. Farm with Abby's friend Marcella, okay? And Bar was there as well. One night, Cody made a wish on a falling star. A wish he could have a real adventure this summer. To do things no one else has ever done before, he whispered. Okay, makes sense in any way. Come on, in the movie from 1998. Makes sense in any way to make more difference than that, but that's just me. Next page. Anyway. But Cody wasn't wishing on a star at, at all. It was a very special egg, okay, that fell to Earth and led safety in the barn and soft bed on hay. The egg had several colored rings, okay, and suddenly one of them glowed brightly. What could it mean? Well, we'll see what happens next. Um. This car rings. What is who I was next? Next page. Anyway. Oh, wow. Now, Marcel is played by Carl Platt from the Powell family. And Coley Atcher um, is played by um, um, Trevor Morgan, who did. It was later played by some, some guy who did Jurassic Park 3 at the time. Anyway. After the children found the egg, okay, they took it to uh, their grandparents' neighbor, um, Miss Goldfinch, a bird watcher who lives in a treehouse with lots of birds, okay? I have so many birds that I can buy bird seed by the bur burial, laughed Miss Goldfinch. I bet I can tell what you can, f what you, you what kind of um, egg this is. A, an old book explained that the dream maker would hatch it from the egg. The egg will hatch it when when all the rings have changed colors, read Miss uh, Goldfinch. But it's only latch on the very spot it was first found. Okay? Makes sense in any way. Another ring is changing colors now. Mm hmm. Explained Marcella. We better get the egg back in the barn where we found it. Exactly, Marcella. I mean, at the time, yes, it was, it was later portrayed Penny Powell for the Powell family, you know. Kyle Pratt, you know. And Bob and Wes who portrayed Barney. And it was, it was David Joyner who's been doing a voice, it was a costume performer Barney, so... It's all happening right there, so there you go on that. It makes sense to everybody. Next page. Anyway. Oh, wow. Okay. The restaurant accidentally sent the egg out with a food delivery for circus workers. Well, it saddens me, I know. Especially the parade when I saw the movie bits and pieces. Especially the years later. So a review from childhood fullback, you know, that's me, of course. Anyway, Barney and the children discovered the egg being juggled, okay? Another ring has changed colors, said Barney. We gotta get the, um, egg back from the barn soon, shouted Barney, okay? They worried the juggler might drop the egg, but instead he threw it high in the air and out of sight. Hmm. Felt worried with that matter, you know. Kind of different the whole thing at the at the the fact that 
Chloe, or Abby, and Marcella are just different kids, you know? And I felt worried for Angus. And no, I'm not talking about Angus Young for ACDC. I'm talking about Angus the horse, you know? That's me, of course. Next page. Anyway. Luckily, Barney's old friend, the collector, caught the egg in this high air balloon. Using the imaginations to the friends pretend that a log could fly. Okay, makes sense anyway. So it became an airplane. And Barney and his uh, friends took off, um, dropped the egg down to us. Barney shouted to his friend. But the egg fell past. Abby had stretched hands towards the ground. Cody took the plane into the dive, yelling, We have to. We have to catch the egg. That egg. Excuse me, Miss Book. Anyway. It was good enough to um, collect their egg. So, there you go on that. And it makes sense to anybody. So, there you go on that. Especially the fact that I have the degree of coin in this form. Now, for Shuri Douglas, who passed away in 2020. Or, tw yeah, something like that. I don't know. It... It was make sense to everybody, so there you go. And I don't know. And George Hur, who been doing um, who also been doing do with Julie Johnson at the time, who been doing a great job of been doing the quick things at the time with take care of baby F I G at the time and great ideas when there are things, but that's just me of course. But anyway, good ideas anyway. They caught the egg just before it hits the ground. And there's a plane crash in the haystack. The egg's uh, last ring is changing, said Coley. Quick, let's put the egg in the barn once we have found it so, so, so it can hatch. Exactly. Just do something about it, grandparents. Do something. You know? That's me, of course. And boy, was it there. Cody put the egg exactly where where they found it. First found it, excuse me. So a tiny cracks appear in the egg cell shell, excuse me, okay anyway. Appear in the egg um and light stones out from the inside the egg, it's hatching, said Barney with a smile. Super de duper. Exactly, it's it's twinkling, according to what Kay Clark told me about it, maybe about knowing it was the name. But anyway, it was hatching right away. So there you go. Next page. Anyway. Uh, boy, Apple King, Apple Day Queen and Queens. The grandparents? Oh boy. The dream makers. Okay, makes sense. Anyway. Abby riding the horse makes sense anyway. But anyway. Twinkling the dream maker helps. Everyone sees their dreams, explained Barney. And the dreams you see clearly are most likely to come true. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, sure enough, when Twinkling the Dream Maker hatched from the egg, everyone could see the dreams. Abby saw herself as a jockey with her horse race. Uh-huh. And Grandma and Grandpa, Grandma, uh, Dreamer went to their king and queen of their Apple Festival. Uh-huh. Makes sense in any way because, yeah, it, Apple Day Festival, kind of like the movie from 1998. You know, that's me, of course. So, yeah, it makes sense to anybody, so there you go. And here comes the last page of the book, staying that. See, said Barney happily, if we use our imaginations, dreams really do come true. Especially my head right there. Yeah, I agree with that, so... It does really make the difference when you hugs a Barney or something like that. It does believe you in, the, in her own childhood dreams. So there you go on that. So that was Barney's Great Adventure the Movie book. What I think about this book, I think it was amazing. So far it's my childhood movie and so far the book was a successful one. That was the Bedtime Stories episode number 196. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for the next one. It's going to be another Barney book. For you guys to enjoy. Now, my excuse me, I gotta get ready for bed, go work, and get ready for weekend celebration episode number 190. 
let's say, 119. Excuse me, Phil. Okay, anyway. Till next time. Sweet Jesus and Bob, peace out, baby. Excuse me. Get more videos from me soon. Till then, this is out. See ya.